In this video, we will look at the structure and principle of operation of a constant vacuum carburetor. Let's start with the part where air is drawn into the carburetor. This part, in which the diameter goes to narrowing along the course of the movement, is called the confuser. But most often by mistake this part is called the diffuser. Here is located the air jets of the idling system, the air nozzle of the main fuel system, air channel of the starting enricher. This wide duct is used to admit air and transfer atmospheric pressure to the diaphragm chamber, gas pedal pump nozzle. Electric valve of the starter enricher, fuel supply nozzle to the float chamber, connector communicating the float chamber with the atmosphere, adjustment screw of idle fuel mixture quantity. By default, the screw is unscrewed from the stop by two and a half turns. Under the screw there is a spring, a metal washer and a rubber sealing ring. Throttle plate. The same idle speed channel that is adjusted by the screw. Three non-adjustable mixture channels for transients when the throttle is opened. A mixture feed channel for enrichment at cold start. Channel controlling the air cutoff valve. The traverse on which the throttle stop adjusting screw is located. The lever that drives the gas pedal pump. The torque is transmitted from the throttle sector. Also on this side is the air cutoff valve. It is called the idle stabilization valve. It serves to enrich the idle mixture in cases of sharp closing of the throttle at high crankshaft speeds. Diaphragm spring. Ceiling ring. Diaphragm, valve seat, plastic valve, valve spring, air inlet, outlet, under the top cover is the diaphragm chamber where the spring is located, a piston with a diaphragm, also called a spool, dispensing fuel needle, Rubber ring, stop washer. At the bottom of the piston, in addition to the hole for the needle, there is another hole for controlling the piston. The atomizer of the main metering system. Fuel enters the float chamber through this channel. When the fuel level reaches the set level, the float closes the channel with the needle. One of the following problems can occur in this assembly. Debris getting under the needle can cause the fuel to overflow. Also, if the scooter has not been operated for a long time, the needle may be stuck in the open or closed position. The spring-loaded pin of the needle may also be sour. In good condition, when the pin is pressed, it should return to its original position. Idle speed fuel gauge. main fuel gauge. Feeding tube of the starting enricher. Gas pedal nozzle inlet. Rubber gasket. Gas pedal pump. Pump supply channel. Fuel supply channel to the gas pedal nozzle. Gusher, spring with a ball acting as a check valve. Return spring, stem with diaphragm. Ceiling ring. Fuel chamber of the enricher. A channel with a built-in plug through which the fuel chamber is filled. The enrichment feed tube has a hole on the side for deflating the fuel chamber. Inside the tube has truncated holes for fuel dosing. The enricher supplies the engine with additional fuel air mixture during the starting and warm up stages of a cold engine. When the engine is still cold, the locking element in the form of a piston with a needle at the end is drawn into the inside of the solenoid valve body. Thus, 
the fuel channel and the ready mixture supply channel are open. During starting and running of the engine, negative pressure occurs in the enrichment chamber. Atmospheric pressure acts on the fuel in the float chamber, which forces the fuel into the low pressure zone, i.e. into the enrichment chamber. First, the fuel fills the enrichment chamber up to the top of the enrichment chamber, displacing excess air through the side hole in the tube. The fuel then enters the enrichment valve chamber. The air from the air filter also enters here through the corresponding air duct. Fuel mixed with air forms a mixture and is drawn through the feed channel to the carburetor outlet. Immediately after the engine is started, power begins to flow to the heating element of the electrovalve. As the thermocouple heats up, the shut-off needle of the solenoid valve extends. As a result, the needle closes the fuel supply to the enrichment chamber and the piston closes the supply channel, aka the outlet from this chamber, to avoid idle air intake through the air channel. A dried out solenoid valve o-ring is often the cause of a poor cold start. If the valve jams in the open position, the engine will run at higher idle speeds. This can result in excessive fuel consumption. If the needle jams in the closed position, there may be difficulty starting the engine on cold. At idle, i.e. when the throttle is closed, the engine is supplied with fuel-air mixture through the idle channel. The channel starts with the idle air nozzle. The channel is then joined by an additional air channel. It originates in the diaphragm chamber and passes through the air shut-off valve. This valve is open most of the time. The air from these two channels is then directed to the emulsion tube of the idle speed nozzle. Fuel from the float chamber also rises here under the action of atmospheric pressure through the idle speed nozzle. Here the fuel is mixed with air and the mixture is directed to the exhaust ducts. A group of three exhaust ports is located under the plug when viewed from below. From above, these ducts exit under the throttle plate. They are used in transients during throttle opening and partially in idling mode if the throttle is significantly opened by the stop screw. Another exhaust port is located behind the throttle plate, at the carburetor outlet. It is several times larger than the previous three. From this channel the engine is fed in idle mode. The throughput of this channel is changed with the mixture quantity adjustment screw. Let's return to the air cutoff valve. If the throttle is closed sharply while the engine is running at high speeds, the working mixture is depleted. This in turn causes ignition misses. Unburned fuel is ejected into the exhaust and after its accumulation can be shot into the muffler. You can avoid such a development by enriching the mixture immediately after a sharp closing of the throttle. This is the purpose of the air cutoff valve. In the normal state the spring presses on the diaphragm, the diaphragm stem presses on the shutoff valve, keeping it open. Air from the intake, passing through the main diaphragm chamber, flows freely through the valve into the idle channel supplementing the air from the air jets. When the throttle is closed abruptly under the condition of high crankshaft speed, maximum vacuum is created in the exhaust duct through the control duct, which also passes through the cover. This rarefaction extends up to the diaphragm of the shut-off valve. Atmospheric pressure bends the diaphragm, overpowering the spring. The valve closes the air channel. In this way, air enters the idle speed channel only through the air nozzle. This increases the amount of gasoline in the idle mixture. When the engine speed decreases and the vacuum decreases, the spring returns the diaphragm to its original position, thus opening the cutoff valve. A possible malfunction of this valve is a damaged diaphragm. If the diaphragm ruptures, the engine may have difficulty starting on cold and unstable idling. When the throttle is opened, the rarefaction area begins to spread to the opposite side of the intake airflow. The same atmospheric pressure in the float chamber raises the fuel through the main jets to the lower pressure zone, which is now in and above the emulsion tube. On the air side of the main metering system, air enters the emulsion tube. Mixing with the fuel, the mixture is drawn past the metering needle, through the atomizers, into the working zone or as it is also called the mixing zone. Then, along with the air, it's directed into the engine intake. As the crankshaft spins up, so does the rarefaction. The residual pressure inside the pistons and diaphragm 
which was equal to atmospheric pressure, is released through special calibrated holes. The higher the engine speed, the faster this happens. As the pressure inside the piston and diaphragm decreases, the atmospheric pressure entering the diaphragm chamber begins to press on the diaphragm, overpowering the spring in the piston. The piston together with the needle rises, thereby increasing the atomizer capacity, giving more mixture and air to the engine intake. This system was invented to ensure that the fuel-air mixture is supplied in the right amount for the current engine speed, regardless of the degree of throttle opening. After closing the throttle valve, atmospheric pressure fills the piston cavity, thus equalizing the pressure on the diaphragm, both from the inside and outside, the piston returns to the original position. The main malfunction of this unit is diaphragm rupture. The sign of such malfunction is inadequate response to the throttle handle. The engine speed does not reach the average. If you open the throttle too sharply, the load on the engine will be significant. This can lead to a sharp merging of the mixture. To exclude such moments, the carburetor has a gas pedal pump, which injects an additional portion of fuel directly into the mixing chamber when the throttle is opened sharply. Fuel from the float chamber through this hole fills the cavity under the pump diaphragm. When the throttle handle is opened sharply, the pump rod is pressed down. The pressure from the diaphragm is transferred to the fuel, since the inlet port is smaller than the outlet port. The pressurized fuel passes through the pump outlet port, traveling to the check valve. Overpowering the valve spring, lifting the shutoff ball. At this time some of the fuel that is already in the enrichment nozzle channel is injected into the mixing chamber. Part of the new fuel fills the gas pedal channel. After pressure equalization, the valve closes, eliminating the possibility of fuel backflow. When the throttle is closed and the lever is not pressing on the pump rod, the spring returns the diaphragm to its original position. Fuel from the float chamber fills back under the pump diaphragm. If, however, the throttle opening is not sharp enough and there is little pressure from the fuel, the fuel will simply flow back into the float chamber through the inlet port. A common fault is the unbending of the lever that transmits torque to the pump rod. In such cases, all you have to do is bend the lever again to allow it to pressurize the gas pedal. Because the booster pump feed port is at one of the lowest positions, it sometimes causes water to accumulate under the pump diaphragm. This leads to corrosion of the pump cavity itself and the spring. It is therefore worth looking under the pump diaphragm when cleaning the carburetor. The gas pedal pump spring and the air cutoff valve spring are somewhat similar. It is easy to confuse the two, Therefore, it should be remembered that the gas pedal pump spring is softer than the bleeder valve spring. The throttle valve is not disassembled for maintenance, so the screws and its fasteners are flared to prevent unauthorized unscrewing. Under the metal cap there is a stopper and washer. On the sector side of the flap axis there is a capron sleeve and a rubber collar. That's all. Thank you for watching. Until new videos.